Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and I'm back for another episode. Just before I get into it, I want to give a quick, make a quick note. Um, and last week I talked about the fact that as we were recording, water was flowing in my apartment. Um, but I am happy to say that as of the time of recording this episode, everything has been dried up. All the holes have been closed and new carpet. And so starting to get back into some semblance of normalcy. So that's kind of partially one of my things I'm grateful for. But for this week's episode, I'm happy to share that I have Mr. Amuta or Mayor Amuta, um, but I will let him go into more detail in terms of who he is and all the great things that he does. But welcome, sir. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. All right. So should I refer to you as Mayor Mr. Uh, what would you, how would you like could, people to call you? We could be informal. Charles is good. Charles, Charles okay. is good. Yeah. All right. Well, Charles, thank you for being here. Um, it's been a year, to say the least. Um, I actually, I was just thinking back in terms of like trying to prep for today. It's like, oh, wow. I met you at the beginning of the year um, when, when we thought life was, you know, still Normal. regular. We was on a cruise and just enjoying Yep. And enjoying life, not really had, I would say, I know personally had no idea what was coming. Um, but, you know, fast forward, what, six, well, no, eight months later, here we are. But um, with all that being said, I'd like to start each episode with um, just a gratitude moment. So with you being the guest, um, let you go first, if you would just share something or someone that you're grateful for this week or just in general. Sure. Well. Um... Like every week, I mean, I'm grateful for family, right? Um, family is definitely very important. And um, kind of like you said, as you did this intro, this year definitely has been trying for us all. So I would definitely be remiss if I didn't say that I was thankful um, for good health for myself, my family, loved ones. Nobody was impacted by COVID um, so far, knock on wood. And thankfully, nobody um, will be in my family or my circle. So um, I think in this day and age, especially in this year, you just have to be thankful for another day, another opportunity um, at life. And um, I think if this hasn't shown us anything, it shows us that um, tomorrow's not promised. So do your best and uh, strive for all your goals each and every day. Reset each and every day to, uh, you know, just be better than you were the day before. So. That's, that's probably what I'm thankful for. <laughs> oh, okay, well, hey, no, that's that's great, and I would I would echo it, and I feel like every week I have been touching on some of the same things in the sense of just I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be employed for family. I have had some family um, impacted by COVID, um, but thankfully the vast majority are are healthy and doing well. Uh, but I guess if I had to specify something different um, this week that I'm grateful for. It is one, that there's no longer a hole in my ceiling. And two, um, you can't see it, but I have on my shirt for my sorority, for Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. We, it is still our centennial year, even though it is, it celebration is. got interrupted, um, skewed. And so I'll post a picture later, but my shirt is, is, is of the sorority and just the fact that it is our centennial year. So just thankful for being a, a part of, of the sorority, the fact that we have made it to 100 years, and then even, you know, kind of like I said, taking this step further, that is how I met you through a blue and white cruise. So, yep. there we go. Um, but aside from that, I know that you are a, I would say, I would say a very busy, very involved, very engaged um, individual. And in just the short time that I've, I've known, you've learned a lot about all of the things that you do. So I don't know that there's enough time to necessarily get into all of it. But we'll <laughs> one of the things that I did want, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on is, as I mentioned, you are a mayor, but <laughs> not just that. Um, I don't consider, I don't typically consider myself to be a political person. But I know that in some way, shape, or form, everything is political or it's shaped and informed by that in this year, especially. Um, and so with you being a mayor and being a, a young mayor, I think you were or are the youngest or one of the youngest um, elected in your township. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, just like I said, wanted to just, if you could share a little bit about, you know, who you are and just kind of how you got to be the mayor and where mm -hmm. you, what you're of your township. Sure, sure. Appreciate that intro, first of all. Um, I mean, I consider myself just a regular guy that just happens to um, lead a group of people um, as their quote unquote elected official. But um, actually, before I start, one of my political mentors, Troy Singleton, he's a senator here in New Jersey. He always taught me that um, they might look at you as the boss, but at the end of the day, my residents, my constituents are actually my boss, right? Um, they tell me what to do, they elect me, and without them, I don't have any power or control. But like you were alluding to, Latavia, um, I am the mayor of Edgewater Park Township, New Jersey. Um, it's located in Burlington County, about 30 minutes south of Trenton, New Jersey, about 25 minutes, I guess, north from Philadelphia, Center City, Philadelphia. Um, we have a population of a little under 10,000 residents and I pulled some um, quick stats here in preparation for our call. We have a vast, um, very diverse makeup of our uh, 10,000 residents, about 68% of which are um, white Caucasian, 23% African American, 6% Hispanic, 3% Asian. And um, so I represent a very diverse population in uh, South Jersey and to the point you made earlier, I did some research with my clerk and I don't think I'm the first black, I think I'm the second African American mayor in my town, but I definitely am the first West African Nigerian mayor in my town. I can definitely hold um, a claim to that. And I also am the youngest mayor um, in Edgewater Park Township. So, I mean, it's a, um, it's a blessing and um, especially in this environment, right? So. Um, we didn't know that the year was going to shape up the way it has shaped up so far. So it's been interesting. I've been um, an elected official for uh, four, uh, close to four years now, started in January of 2017. So uh, heading into finishing my fourth year and the first three years, I mean, there's no easy year in politics, right? There's always different issues that you're faced with, different um, challenges. Um, there's never enough funding, never enough budget. Everybody's ringing your phone. Their trash didn't get picked up. Their recycling didn't get picked up. Every little issue that residents might have, but that's easy stuff. This year, we're actually faced, obviously, with the pandemic, um, social unrest, and just a whole host of other things. So I'm like, why my luck? You know, I'm like, I'm the new guy. I'm the youngest serving currently. I'm the only African American and I'm charged with um, the great, great task um, that I do take with honor and pride and the responsibility um, as their leader. So that comes with a ton of responsibility right there that I don't take lightly, but um, it is definitely challenging yet rewarding um, the way our township um, run. So in the state of New Jersey, there's five different types of municipal government. You have your townships, your boroughs, cities, uh, village, and then a town. So we operate um, as a township form of government. So the five of us as elected officials, it's myself and four others that I serve with, we, um, we are elected by the people in a vote um, every three years. So every three years, there's an election on a rotating basis two, two, and one. And then the five of us, we have a reorganization meeting in January. The five of us, we select who we want to serve or who we want to serve as mayor um, and as assistant mayor for that calendar year. So for the past, so my first year, I was quote unquote, just a member at large, one of the five in 2017. And then 2018 and 2019, um, I was assistant mayor, so I'm second in command for the past two years as deputy mayor, smooth sailing, not that much social unrest, no pandemic going on. And then just my luck on my last year here, 2020, I'm the mayor and the whole sky falls. So, um, you know, they oftentimes say that um, God gives the toughest battles to his strongest warriors. So I'll just take it like that and I'll just um, kind of consider myself being in this position, um, there's a purpose for it, right? So there's a reason why 
I was placed in this position, in this seat for this year. But uh, it's definitely been challenging and definitely been uh, rewarding as well, but definitely been challenging, so. You have a great perspective and great outlook on it. I would say it echoes in the sense of, as you were talking, um, or towards the end, just, you know, God won't put more on us than we can bear. Even though some days it's like, hmm, okay, God, you think I'm stronger than I am, or I know, you know right. that I'm, you know, clearly you know more than I do. Um, but I guess, yeah, with that, um, I guess if you could just, you alluded to it a bit, but just what has that been like in terms of the pandemic of, because, you're you you are a human you are still experiencing the pandemic yourself and you know managing your you know your day-to-day -day. um because if i remember correctly you are also working another job that, like the being the mayor is not your full time but if you could just talk a little bit about like what that's been like for you in terms of your personal sanity in terms of maintaining yourself but then also still having that responsibility of providing for or answering to your constituents? Very good question. The, um, I guess the easy answer is there's no playbook for this, right? This is our first pandemic of this sort in all of our lifetime. So there really wasn't a kind of answer key or, or test guy for me to, to, to have the wrong answer on everything. So when I say we're literally, and when I say we, um, it definitely is not myself alone. I have a great uh, staff. I have a more than capable administrator who actually uh, double dips as a county freeholder. So he's an elected official himself on the county level who serves as our township administrator. He reports to me, but he actually um, provides me with a lot of knowledge and a lot of, you know, kind of the sense of direction on where to go. But to answer your question directly, it has been challenging um to balance that right so my first thought when all this started back in march was to err on the side of caution so i had all of our administrative staff immediately start working from home and go into a um work from home um environment for the first two or three months so um safety is definitely um you know of the utmost importance and my mom always taught us prevention is better than cure right so the, the last thing that I would want happen is for something to happen where somebody contracted the virus in the office, passed it to their fellow coworkers or a resident coming in town to, um, you know, to do something, application or anything like that. So we immediately started working from home and went to a virtual environment, uh, which had its own um, level of hiccups and challenges right because everybody is facing this pandemic together but um people sometimes see individuals in a service position like our administrative staff like they're like not facing it with them they just expect them to be in the office right. like, like yeah you just do your job i don't care about your personal life i don't care about your personal life and or health and safety right so right. <laughs> You guys are working from home, so our office staff is going to work from home. But at the end of the day, um, a municipality does have a lot of responsibilities and does have a lot of things that still need to get done, right? Bills still need to get paid. We still need to provide the funding that we do for our school districts and the various projects and road improvements that we had going on before all this started. So um, it was an all-hands-on-deck approach to see how we can maintain um you know the workings of the township but also do it in a safe um environment for not only staff but as well as our residents so that is what we operated under for the first three or four months and we're actually just recently slowly going back into the half, um, office on a hybrid model okay. so a couple days in the office and our staff is still home for a couple days out of the week as well on a staggered schedule so luckily knock on wood we were able to maintain our efficiency um at a pretty decent level while all this was going on um that shout out to a great staff great office staff great um township clerk that i have working for me great police department who maintained um our law and order throughout all this uh great um uh, disaster relief 
coordinator that we have in town. So all of those parties working in conjunction with each other and myself have uh, been blessed to maintain our consistency and efficiency while this was going on, but it hasn't been easy. It um, definitely takes um, a lot of patience, a lot of meetings, a lot of conference calls, a lot of guidance from the state. And what makes it a little easy in the state of New Jersey is the governor does constantly put out a lot of information and messages. So um, if something is is to the liking of a resident or not to the liking of a resident, oftentimes it comes down from the governor. So we can just kind of blame him. We could just say, hey, blame your governor. You know, we're just following the rules as a municipality, but um, the municipality um, operates independently, but whatever the state mandates, meaning state law does trump local law. So anything that I say, if I would have said um, staff has to stay in the office and the, you know, and it comes down from the state, you know, the governor's office, Governor Murphy said otherwise, that would obviously trump any of my orders. So it's easy when you could just follow their direction and then kind of work off of that guidance. So um, knock on wood, what, six months into this pandemic so far? I mean, Edgewater Park is still standing. We're still maintaining our quality of life, still getting the bills paid and um, still doing our thing. But uh, it's not easy and I definitely, um, it's definitely been trying, right? Because like you said, I do have another job. Um, you know, um, so I work in finance. So it's hard to juggle both of those responsibilities as well as responsibilities in a fraternity that I've assumed and taken on this year. So it's tough. It's tough, but um, it's manageable with a okay. strong support system. Um, we've been finding a way. Well, that is, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And it is, my wheels were starting to turn just like who I'm a little tired just thinking about all of the things that are required just on the level of you being mayor and you know managing those responsibilities because that in and of you know that's a lot in and of itself and then you adding on your day job and you being as involved as you are in the fraternity um which I don't know if I said it you tell them I know you held up the sign, but tell them what fraternity that you are in. Okay, I'm part of the Blue and White family. Okay. Um, so Latavia is actually my sorority sister, Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, the greatest fraternity in the world, founded January 9th, 1914 on the campus of Howard University. So proud, proud member of the fraternity and uh, actually serve as the state treasurer for the state of New Jersey for Sigma, as well as my local grad chapter, Trenton Sigma's Lambda Lambda Sigma. So, um, yeah. The Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Apparently. But okay. So yeah, I, I wanted to make sure I actually had you say it because for those who may not watch the video, they didn't they couldn't they can't see you. Sure. Just, you know, I like to err on like you said, err on the side of caution. And I don't want to assume that people know what I'm talking about or what we're talking about. Although I feel like they should. They should, they right? Should. They should. But okay, so you are it sounds as though you are doing a, a great job of managing everything that you know life has thrown at you and like you said this pandemic is something that everyone is as far as i know we are all figuring it out um as we go along like it's it's new for everyone but i guess if i could just kind of you know we press rewind a little bit you said you're in your fourth year as an elected official but so you're a bit of a pro now you're a veteran so to speak, um, but just, you know, like kind of rewinding back to prior to that, like what, what possessed you to decide, yes, I not only want to be um, educated or aware and involved, but I want to take it a step further and actually, you know, become an elected official. Like what were some of the, I don't know, the thought processes, life events, <laughs> like what was the catalyst for doing that? Very good question. So me personally, I have a kind of unique uh, story, Latavia. So I've always been inquisitive. So I've always been the person to ask questions. Hey, where does my tax dollars go? What did they use? What, what did they get used for? Who are my elected officials who make the rules and govern the rules that I live by in my town? So I actually, um, in college at Rider University, I took a minor in political science by happen chance, just because the professor, I took a 
political science course, freshman year, professor was like, super cool dude. He was fairly easy. And he told us first day of class, you're not going to have a midterm. You're not going to have a final. There's no <laughs> books to buy. I'm like, this is college. So like, I'm hooked. Sign me up. Where else? Sign me up. Sign me up, Latavia. So it was funny. So like, it was super hard to get in this class, right? Because all the athletes, they uh, signed into his class first. You know, the athletes, no offense, they want that easy course or easy, easy. Hold up. We are not going to do athlete slander do okay. here on this podcast, okay? Okay. But I, so, I, I hear you, but we're not going to do that. But go ahead. You know what I'm so the athletes, they always went to the class first. So the class was almost sold out. So I'm like, um, I heard from a friend that, you know, the professor was, was, was cool, nice, and it was an easy class. You know, so I'm trying to balance that, uh, trying to balance that GPA out. So I took him for the first political science course. I think it was like American history or something like that. Great course, very informative. He was very, um, he was an easygoing professor, real cool. You don't find that a lot in, in, you know, depending on what your major is. I was a business major. All of my professors were super serious. I was a finance major. So it's like, number crunching all day so when you find one that's not like that you kind of take advantage fast forward um he's teaching another course the next semester so i'm like hey i'll take this course too uh following semester same thing he actually you know we were so cool even if the class was full he would sign me in to the class i get a special exception so i wound up taking like six political science courses like all my electives in college were all political science and I found out that you need six or seven to declare it as a minor. So I'm like, why not? Why not minor in political science? So um, that's how I kind of took a liking into politics. Fast forward. So I moved to my town in 2009. Didn't really know anybody. Um, didn't really um, associate with like my neighbors. Everybody kind of stays to themselves over here. You know, it's kind of like, don't bother me. I won't bother you. Don't talk to me. I won't talk to you sort of thing, which is cool with me. <laughs> the <millennial> way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's cool with me. So I just started um, going to our township meetings. I checked our website um, and I would uh, implore people to check your township's website. It has all the meeting information, the meeting dates, when they meet, where they meet. Uh, might be a little different in this environment. Some uh, townships are still meeting virtually, which we were meeting for about four months. We're actually just back to in-person meetings as of last month, but find out when and where your township meets for their local, uh, their local meetings. They have school board meetings, planning board meetings, your local township meetings with elected officials. So I just started going, right? It was literally like five residents in town and I don't know if you remember in my intro, I said our town is about 10,000 residents. So about five people would go to the meeting. So if it's a new face, your elected officials are going to like, hey, and say, who's that hey. guy? Yeah. I didn't see you last time. I didn't see you last time. Who is, who is this random guy sitting in the crowd? So that's exactly what happened. Uh, one of the elected officials at the time came up to me because I think I was wearing something fraternity related Latavia. So that's how like our organizations being in the Greek world together can market ourselves. I might've had like a wristband on and or something subtle and or, cause I don't wear too much like paraphernalia. Like, like if I'm just coming straight from work and I think I came from work to the township meeting. So either my briefcase had Sigma on it, a wristband or something. So just so happened that this elected official was my fraternity brother. Just so happened that he's like, Hey, Hey, he said, do you live in town? I'm like, yeah, I live on Cooper. She's like, oh, okay. Da, 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 da. He invited me to a meeting, came back to the next meeting. And then he um, asked me to volunteer on a couple volunteer boards that we have, right? So each town will have, say, like a recreation committee. A, uh, we have urban redevelopment. We have environmental shade tree committee, senior committee, events and planning. So there's various committees that uh, residents can volunteer for and participate in. So that's actually how I got started. I volunteered for a couple years on these um, on these committees to kind of get my feet wet. And then an opportunity came about on the ballot and they asked me to run. I'm like, I don't know the first thing about a campaign, how to run one. So um, another thing that I'll add is whatever your party affiliation is, Democrat, Republican, 
each town usually, and I'll say usually because they're supposed to have a town-wide um, political interest group for that party. So in Edgewater Park, there's a Edgewater Park um, club for all like registered Democrats. You can go to this meeting, they meet like the first Monday of the month. So it's EP Dem. So I first got involved with that board. And then I was going to their meetings, kind of getting my feet wet to the political process, how that works. And then I ran my first election in uh, November of 2016 and I won. And then I was sworn in in January 2017. So it all kind of happened so fast, happened as a blur. I'm like, what, what? Is that easy? But um, it's literally just kind of networking, uh, getting connected to the right people. If you can't get connected to the right people, seek out the information yourself. And it's easier. I just heard a little, uh, little echo there. Oh. It's easier if you um, get connected to your parties uh political affiliation in that um particular town so if you connect with your dem club or republican club in your town it's a little easier to kind of make headways and make wavelengths into politics so that's what i did um they were super happy to have a young person involved it's a lot of older folks you know more seasoned i call them folks uh a uh, few senior citizens in there. So when they saw somebody like under 40, they're like, okay, who's that guy? Like, he's gonna Back run him up. Don't let him leave. Don't let him leave without getting his information. And they saw I was African American as well. And unfortunately, um, in our society, we don't see as many um, minorities, specifically African Americans, getting involved in the political process than we should. Um, so, they took a liking to me and four years later, I'm still here, but get involved. Even if it's not as an elected official, I would implore everybody to just do a little bit of research in your respective town, see what volunteer boards that they have and pick something that uh, suits your interests. Okay, yeah, so you, you kind of hit the nail on the head towards the end there uh, in terms of there's not a lot of African-Americans, at least visibly, um, that are involved in politics. And, and so that is also part of, you know, why I, as much as I do not like talking about politics and I want to avoid it, I have accepted that I can't, um, it's not avoidable. And I have always- Not this year, sorry. Yeah, not this year, really not ever, but specifically this year. And yep. it's interesting, ironically, when this year started, I said I wanted to do more to get involved and just, you know, what can I do individually? And then as the year has progressed and all the different things uh, have transpired, one of the things that I realized, okay, that I can do is you have this platform, use it to, to speak on things and also amplify the voices of others. And so because, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this, because specifically us as African-Americans in this country, um, we get the brunt of everything and I would say have the hardest hill to, you know, steepest hill to climb in, in many respects. It's this year more than ever, it's imperative that everyone get engaged, get involved. Um, I was going to say shout out to Zeta for the get engaged um, campaign, but, um, but yeah, just like, that. but, um, you know, knowing that you did this so young, it sounds like it was a combination of curiosity, a great professor, <laughs> which, you know, kind of, and, you know, desire to have somewhat easy A, but whatever the combination was that kind of sparked your interest, what are some things that you would say to people who are, they don't find it interesting, or they didn't, you know, they didn't have a professor, or they're just honestly jaded, uh, because of everything that has happened, whether it be people in our age group, those who are older, um, but just like, what are some things that you would say or that you say to your constituents or to friends and family of just like, hey, regardless of what it looks like, it's still important that you, you get involved? Very good question, right? Um, oftentimes people think that politics, they, um, they oftentimes think politics only works from the top down, top being 
presidential election is the only election and or the bottom up, like their local municipality, they think um, those are, are the only elections that really affect their lives and what they do, but that's not the case. So I was actually, um, great question that you asked, right? Because especially in this climate, right? A lot of people, they either agree or disagree with the president and they're like, okay, I can't do anything about it though, right? Like, how am I gonna vote him out of office? So some people don't know every four years, there is a presidential election. Last one was 2016. That's how we're kind of in this predicament that we're in today, because a lot of people, to your Thank point, you. um, exactly, Tavia, they, they felt disenfranchised, right? They felt, what's my one vote going to do? It's not going to make a difference. But if I think like that, and you think like that, and five people that we know think like that, five people that they know think like that, those votes add up. And when you're talking about a local election, in my municipality, I actually pulled the stats um, in preparation for our call here today. You know, I got to be prepared. So of our 10,000 residents, at last check, there was um, 4,700 registered voters. So let's just look at my town, Edgewater Park, as an example. 44% were registered as Democrats, 17% were registered as Republicans, and 39% were registered as unaffiliated. So of those people, 4,800 being registered at the last election, there was only 58% of those registered, um, registered voters actually came out and cast a ballot. So think about that. 42% of individuals that are registered, meaning the hard part is done, and, and it's not even hard to register these days, right? No, it's not. It's definitely not Latavia. So New Jersey last week, the governor signed into law, I believe, um, for the first time ever, the ability to register online, I'm sorry, register to vote completely online. So you don't even have to leave your house. You didn't even have to leave your house before. You can download a form, but you still had to mail it in. You don't even have to use a stamp anymore. So the 30 something cents, 40, I don't know how much a stamp is these days. <laughs> under 50 cents, it took, for the cost of postage, if that was an excuse before, it's not an excuse right now because you can completely register online to vote and be part of the political process, right? So, um, and also on the same topic, Latavia, is, is the census, right? This is a census year. The census deadline is, um, is um, uh, at the end of this month, so September 30th. And the census, people are like, why am I going to complete the census? It's invasive. It's like, you know, they're nosy. Why do they want to know about this? But the census and what um, folks don't know sometimes is the stats on the census, right? They contribute to what the schools are going to get for funding, what programs your town is going to have, such as Head Start, what type of lunch programs your township is going to offer, what type of transportation can be in your town or made available, roads, bridges that need improvement. And it's not only the fixing of those roads and bridges. When you fix roads and bridges in a town, that comes with labor, right? There's, there's jobs involved with that. So that creates jobs you know, for laborers. So, um, and then states can also lose their reps in Congress. So um, I'm actually, I'm saying the Electoral College, I can get in, into that like a little later, but depending on your population, that's how many electoral votes that you have and how many representatives that you have in Congress. So say I have 20 or 25 percent of my population aren't completing the census, those folks aren't counted. So that funding has to get sent somewhere from the federal government. The federal government, let's say, have a hundred billion dollars. That hundred billion dollars is going to go to various places. So if you don't complete the census, it's like you don't want the free money. It's going to go to other places that do complete that census. Right. And they do want that free money. So you have to get involved in the political process, definitely. Your municipality, like I said, has mayor and either city council or township members, such as myself. You go to a county level in New Jersey, um, there are county freeholders. Then you have assembly people. In the state of New Jersey, there's two assembly people per district, 40 districts in the state. So two times 40, there's 80 assembly people and one senator per district. Kind of similar to how it is on a federal scale where uh, there's two senators per state and then your, uh, your other people um, in the House of Representatives, it's like that in your state as well. So 
every election counts. Your municipality, your mayor, they make what's called ordinances. Ordinances is your law local law. So I can pass an ordinance that I sign off on and guess what? Effective that day of my signature, that's now law. So if you don't do that ordinance, you're now breaking the law locally. So it's important. Every single election is important. Your, um, your county officials, they pass the laws that's in your county. Your state officials, they pass the laws that are governed by your state and up and up and up. So every single election has an influence and every single election has an impact on some portion of your life. Not necessarily um, some more than others, maybe on the local level, it's where your funding goes, how much you give to your school system, how much you give to your police department. I know there's a lot of um, folks out there um, that are talking about defunding the police and reallocating some of those resources. Each municipality in town has its own set of challenges, has its own set of of obstacles and hurdles that you have to cross. So um, there's no blanket rule for any of that, but every election does matter. And every single election, even down to your school board, right? How much your school board funding, how much they pay your teachers. And if you don't pay your teachers, they're not gonna be happy. The township or the mayor, we don't decide on those rules. That's your school board. So even school board elections, have a huge, huge impact on our day-to-day -day life. And people just need to get involved and um, kind of, um, um, kind of, you know, find the knowledge out themselves and, and just, just get accustomed to voting in each and every election because each one is vastly important. It is, and I'm so happy everything i agree with everything that you've said and just i'm happy you brought up the census because this is a census year and i for the life of me don't understand why people refuse to do the census it does not take that long like you said it's it's free money it's making sure that you're counted like i got so annoyed uh, a few months ago like i did this in my census real early but there were the people the canvassers started coming around and i was like notice i live in an apartment complex i'm coming home and I'm seeing all these little signs, you know, that they leave like, hey, we were here. And I'm like, why are they not answering the door? Why are they not responding? And then to the point of, um, I guess it's been about a month now. I get a, it's a Saturday. I get a knock on the door and it's it's a canvasser. And she's like, hi, I just have some questions. I wanted to know if you know anything about your neighbors, because sometimes when we don't get a response, we'll reach out. And I was like, well, I don't really know people. But thankfully, she asked me about like the two that I did know about. Two that like, you yeah, did know. I, look, um, it's two people, uh, this, and you know, like I, what else you need to know? Like, and I think there's this number of people in this one down here. Like, yes, please get this information because I don't understand. And I, I stopped, if it wasn't for COVID, I might have knocked on their door. I'm like, excuse sure. me, why are you not answering the census? But <laughs> like I said, that just, it really, and it almost surprised me how, frustrated that I got by it but it's just like it's it's not that hard it doesn't take that much time and this year you could do it completely online um same like you said with registering to vote um and I'm a part of some different groups that are doing you know working to get people registered like you said you can nice. do a lot of it online or remotely especially with COVID now so yep. If you are not registered to vote, I implore you to do that. I will, I have posted some information before. I will do it again in terms of like where you can go to get registered to vote. Um, and like you said, elections, you mentioned the school board. And I think as much as people and myself included, we get frustrated by the presidential election specifically in 2016, because that was a hot mess, mm -hmm. uh, but just, I think people get so focused on that and it, and I can see how it's it's easy to do that because if you're watching the news or you're listening to national media, you hear about those things every day, all the time, like the, yeah. the federal or national level elections. But even if you, and I, I'm not saying this to encourage anyone to not vote in those elections, but I would almost rather you not vote in a presidential one and vote on the local level. If you had to pick, yeah, yeah exactly. The local to... level's affecting your day-to-day -day more. Right, like yep. if you had to pick, like I want you to do it all, but if you, you were just like, no, and you, it's only gonna be one, I would much rather you focus on the local uh, elections because like you like at your local, you're, you're a bit higher level than 
you're higher than the school board or some of the council positions, but it's still all of those things matter because let's say you don't like the president, you know, you don't like the president, you don't like the, maybe you don't like the governor of your state, but then your local officials, you, those are people who are aligned with you. So when they do get the resources that are allocated to like the township or the specific city or county, they are then responsible for how those resources get allocated. So if we're already working with a limited amount, of course, those people are going to divvy it up to the causes and the groups that they see yep. as worthy and valuable. And if you're not responding to a census and it looks like it's less numbers, oh, well, cool. They, we don't need to put as much over there. We yep. can divert these funds over here. And so vote. <laughs> like, yep, can't see it enough. Yeah, vote. Um, and like you said, you, you mentioned uh, a few times, educating yourself. Yep. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm a big proponent of education in general, but just trying to be, I do my best to be informed. My profession requires me to be informed because other people are relying on me to give them information. But what are some, I guess, ways or where do you go? I should say prior to becoming a mayor as well as now, like, where do you go to get the information? Because just being frank, I know a lot of people are getting their information from social media, but what are some sources that you consider credible if someone was going to just Google, okay, because, you know, Google is the first stop for a lot of things. Yep. But, like, what are some of your re the resources that you use or that you would point people to in terms of being coming informed? Great. Glad you asked that question, um, Latavia, because I actually pulled a site up from that earlier as well. Like I said, did my homework. So the census, I would implore everybody to go 2020census.gov. If you haven't completed the census yet, please go there and do that. But regards to voting, Latavia, and your question, found a great site early. I believe it was rockthevote.org. Yeah, rockthevote.org. It's a great website on how to volunteer, get folks registered um, and taken to the polls, has all you need to know about your local elections and all your elections. And I know kind of, um, I think you mentioned this earlier in your statements, how Zeta is doing a lot for Rock the Vote. Sigma is as well, along with all of our other Greek letter organizations, right? So your Greek letter orgs in your town and or churches, they're typically strong advocates as well of voting and getting people involved. So I would definitely um, implore people, you know, to reach out to those um, those avenues as well. And you mentioned it, I believe, Latavia said something about like um, top down voting. Like, I don't know if you purposely did it, but you were saying how like people vote on the president and then if they don't like the governor, you know, they vote down. That's a very good topic, right? Because right now um, we have a very controversial president in office today. So, um, and, you know, and kind of just looking at the news, there's been a war on the voting process. And I know it's disenfranchising certain people. They're like, see, I didn't even want to vote anyway. Now they're making it hard for me to vote. I'm just going to forget about it. Um, if anybody sees this, I would just implore you to register to vote. If it's easier for you to do a mail-in ballot and your state allows it, do a mail-in ballot. You don't have to see those long lines. You don't have to wait in line for hours upon hours. Like the one thing that COVID has brought, it's, it's forced different things that weren't virtual or as virtual in the past to be either 100% virtual or more virtual take advantage of that, right? Take advantage of your absentee ballots if you're gonna be away or traveling on voting day, if you're gonna be out of the country or out of the state, but also take advantage of your mail-in voting. So oftentimes on the news, we see that unfortunately, uh, for the most part, the Republican party is suppressing or attempting to suppress um, the votes by constituents or residents all across the country. And that's because they have an increasingly unpopular president out there um, that they fear vote by mail will increase the turnout for Democrats. So they're kind of pushing away young people, minorities and poor folks to stay away. So that's um, 
there's no clear benefit to one political party or another by like voting by mail, but the possibility to them is concerning enough for them to stop it. So I would implore everybody, stay the course. They're expecting you to stay home and they're hoping the turnout will shrink, um, but it's important to stay the course. That's where I was gonna go into real quick. I know we're coming up on the hour, Latavia. Although we can talk about this for hours. Like I'm <laughs> for hours on the voting, just, just cause it's so important. So important to me and it should be equally as important to um, all your listeners as well. But in 2016, for the first time, I believe there was, it only happened three previous times, right? The um, individual who at the time was Clinton, Hillary Clinton, she took the majority of the popular vote. So everybody's like, why isn't she president? Because there's a certain thing called the Electoral College. The Electoral College. So people are like, what the heck is that? So for Electoral College, for those uh, who don't know and actually had to um, kind of say brush up my knowledge on this as well earlier this week, but there's 538 electors in the Electoral College. So all of your members of House of Representatives, that's 435 folks plus two senators per state is another 100, plus there's three in the District of Columbia. So 435 folks in your House of Representatives, your 100 senators plus three in Washington, D.C., make up your 538 electors in the Electoral College. So obviously the majority of 538, the first person, the first presidential candidate to 270 Electoral College votes they win. So the president that's in office today didn't win the popular vote, meaning right. more people voted for the other person than voted for him. First time, it, it only happened four prior times. So when I say it's important to vote, like it happened, I'm sorry, um, in 2016 was the fifth time. Happened in 1824, 76, 1888, 2000, and 2016. So it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. That's just more evidence for people to get out there and vote and for people to get involved in your local political process as well as up and down your state. Each one of those elections are important, right? So um, there's only been seven elections where, um, where the number of electors who voted was contrary to the popular vote. So say 53% of residents in the state of New Jersey or the state um, of Maryland, um, Latavia, where you're at, voted for a certain candidate. It's only happened seven times where that state's electoral college voted in the other direction. So super rare. So that's telling me that the electoral college and the folks that get those votes in electoral college are going to lean towards what their constituents and what their citizens residents which side they vote for so vote 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 regardless of your political party it's important to exercise your right to vote like that's a god-given right you know vote 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 register to vote pay attention, vote. <laughs> yep. pay attention to the deadlines of tavia and just um whether you're doing it in person on the day of the election absentee ballot mail-in ballot whatever it is just make sure your voice is heard I agree. I echo you. And I also appreciate you giving that mini civics lesson because like I, I have also had to brush up on some things this year. Like, hold up. Can he, can, how does this work? How does like, that work? Yeah. I mean, um, what was the show? Uh, Conjunction Junction. Conjunction Junction. What's your I always point? forget yeah. the name of the show, but that mm -hmm. show, I need them to bring it back and or a modern version of it because uh as I mentioned earlier, you know, millennial generation or microwave generation, we don't, as a whole, we don't read as much or we don't like, not to say that there aren't people who do it, but in terms of attention spans are much shorter. Yeah. And so, as, and I'm not on TikTok, I've seen a lot of the videos, but just in terms of like TikTok or Instagram, whatever, YouTube, like I'm, I know that there are videos and things out there, but I, I, I don't know that that's my ministry in terms of creating those things, but I would love to see something like that created. Yeah. Um, and it may be, maybe I just haven't discovered it yet, but created in that similar way, because even though I can't remember everything from that, that show, it definitely gave me, you know, I'm just a bill. 
sitting on Capitol Hill, like all those things. Yep. I remember it and it helps at least give you a, a founding, a starting point. And as much as I love Google and all of the things technology has created, it has given everyone a voice or a platform to an extent. And so it's very easy to go find an article or something that speaks to what you already believe in and reinforcing yes. that as opposed to, I feel like finding objective media or objective news reporting is a bit more of a challenge. So far right now, I feel like NPR is pretty reliable in, yeah. in giving an objective view. So I, I've started listening to some of their podcasts, like to help me stay informed because watching the news was driving me insane. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I can't do it. And so, but I say all that to say that I appreciate you for not just educating yourself, but one of the things, and, and if you're familiar with the Talented Tenth um, that I learned about when I was younger, of just, you know, okay, go educate yourself, but then you got to come back others. And, yeah. and give back and, and bring these others with you. And so I appreciate you for doing that, for embodying that in the sense of, you know, you did what you needed to do to educate yourself to elevate your career in, in multiple levels. And I know we didn't get to talk about it, but one, I know that one of the things you do in terms of with the fraternity is, you know, a lot of the mentoring with, yeah. with younger men. And so I appreciate you for doing that and then not being quiet about it, like, but not in a way of bragging, but in the sense of, Hey, I'm here, I'm doing the work, come do it with me. And sure. so that is another thing that I hope that people listening and or watching um, can take away from this of it's possible. Like you said, there are not a lot of us that we see oftentimes, especially on the local level, we might see, you know, a pepper flake here and there, a pepper speck here and there on the national level. And oftentimes the microscope is a lot closer on us, on our lives as we grow and you, you elevate in a minute you do everything is, Oh, that's that guy. He's the mayor of, or that's the, you know, he's in the fraternity. It's everything gets magnified magnified and it's like you're under a microcosm so i appreciate and i want to say thank you for being fully aware of all of those things going into it that you continue to do so um and that you that. have found a way to to manage your personal well-being safety healthy um and that of your your constituents as well i appreciate that latavia um in edgewater park on that same note, right? So we have a uh, program, well, we had last year before COVID so far this year, but where we have our students in school, right? Our middle school, uh, school students, they actually play the role of the elected officials for like a meeting. So they conduct a meeting to kind of see how the political process works in real time, how to hold the meeting, how to uh, pass amendments and resolutions, Robert's Rules of Order, because um, every year I actually read in the Read for America program, I believe it's every March, I go into a school here in town and we read to the third grader. So one year this kid said, oh wow, you're the mayor. I saw you, um, um, in the paper, we have a little, uh, a little local newspaper or whatever. He said, and my mom said, you're the one that makes all the laws. I said, well, <laughs> you know, like, like it's me and others that make the laws, but you're right. Like it's literally five people on a stage that don't have all the answers. You know, we have some, we, we don't have all the answers though, but it's literally five people in a town of 10,000 that make the rules and the laws that the other 9,995 folks have to live by. So like, that's a crazy, like that's a startling fact, right? So when people hear that, they want to get involved and they want to be part of the process. Like hold your elected officials accountable. Like every elected official, you should be able to um, find their contact information on the township or city's website, send them an email, even if it's just introducing yourself. I get emails all the time. Hey, I don't really want anything. Just want to introduce myself. You're doing a great job. Or I get emails. Hey, da -da 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 -da. I think you're doing a terrible job. You know, my, uh, uh, my power was out from PSE&G last week, you know? So it all comes with the territory, but at least they're engaged, right? So it's one thing to um, complain from the sidelines, and it's another thing to complain, but want to make a difference, want to make a change, and at least you're engaged in the process. So young people, like you're never too early to kind of start um, your own research, 
even if it's not politics, like whatever you're into, even if it's, even if it's, you know, um, being an administrator or a clerk, right? A clerk kind of gathers all our meeting, um, gathers all our minutes, uh, kind of conducts the meeting in accordance with myself. Our administrator is kind of like the face to the personnel staff. Our police chief has a role in our township meetings. Our public works director has a role, our engineer, our solicitor, whatever you want to do, all of those pieces fit together in the political process and all of those pieces of the pie kind of make it what it is. So whatever you're into or not into, there's, there's, there's room for participation from everybody is the point that I'm trying to make. So like, it's not that your mayor has all the answers because I'll let you know as one of 530 something mayors in New Jersey, I don't have all the answers, you know, like, but we, um, we are, um, you know, put in positions of leadership. So it's our job to seek out those answers and find those answers for our residents and constituents. And if you're doing a decent job as an elected official, that should ultimately be your goal as well, right? Like, there's no silly email. There's no, you're wasting my time. You're sending an email. I get back to each and every single email. Might not be that day because, you know, with the full-time <laughs> job and everything going on, but I'm going to get back to you with a personal email. If you leave your phone number, I'm going to call you. Um, if you come to a township meeting, there's a part where we have, you know, the comment from the public, public comment. You can tell your elected officials anything that's on your mind. You can state it. Everybody that comes to the mic, I make sure I send them a personalized note thanking them for coming to the meeting. Thank you for coming to the meeting. Thank you for sharing those concerns. I make sure that their issues that they bring to our attention get followed up on. You can, you know, administrator and my police chief, when they see an email from Charles, they know Charles is asking about something or inquiring about something. And that's because a resident or a constituent asks me. So um, instead of ignoring them and tell, instead of telling them I don't know, as an elected official, you have to seek out those answers. So, you know, like it literally takes a village. It takes a village and everybody can be part of, you know, the solution just to make the, just to make the town and the place you live a little better, a little more comfortable. Well, I have so many things. You said, I would say, should be in the operative word, you know, elected officials should be aware that, you know, they're here to do a service. And you mentioned this earlier that the constituents are their bosses. And I hope and pray that uh, all of our elected officials, if they are not aware of that, they get reminded of that. <laughs> this year will be a reminder. This election will be a reminder of that. Um, but it does take a village. I'm happy to hear that you are aware of the fact that, hey, no, you can't do it alone. You're not there to, granted, you are the, or you and your uh, colleagues are the ones that are elected and you all are in the position to make the decisions, but that you all are aware that it is not on you to make them by yourself and that you do, you have not lost sight of the fact that it is about the constituents. Yep. Um, but I know that because you are a very busy man, mm -hmm. um, we are coming close to, you know, time. So I did want to thank you again for, um, I appreciate for you for having me being Definitely. on the thank podcast you. and sharing, like I said, a little bit of your story. There's so many things I feel like we didn't get to, mm -hmm. um, because there's just going to so be a more. part two sequel. Yes. Yeah, so you know, maybe if you are willing to come back, we can, mm -hmm. we can further this conversation. Um, yeah. but I would say for those listening, if nothing, if nothing else that you got from this conversation, please make sure that you go register to vote and then actually vote. And if you have not completed your census, do that. Um, and so like I said, because I want to be respectful of your time, um, just one other thing that I wanted to kind of share with you and to a bit lighten the mood up a little bit. Um, yeah. One of the things that I do in terms of ending the show is share my random thought, random shower thought, uh, because I am full of random thoughts. <laughs> you may have heard some of them before. I, think I heard a couple. <laughs> but um, but at this one I thought would be a little uh, befitting for this episode with you being an elected official, a public figure, you're a popular person that you might understand or relate where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So my random thought for the week is, did Jesus have groupies? <laughs> I love and it. I'm pretty sure he did. You know, he was Jesus. And he was 
and he had his disciples and there's not a whole lot of details about who but there's always you know talk about crowds being with him and following yeah. him and he was popular he was very popular you know popular in the sense that a lot of people loved him there were a lot of people who didn't like him yep um but just thinking in the thought of like oh uh when he turned water he turned water into wine, wine. And, you know, yep. it was a wedding and party was about to be over because all the wine was gone and then it's like oh no we've got more one he second right here Ta-da! there you go yeah, like keep the party Wonderful. going and then mm-hmm. he turned you know he brought people back from the dead he and mm-hmm. i'm not trying to make light of jesus for sure. anybody listening i'm not trying to make light of it but just like practically speaking he did that he you know so many things and then it was he took you know the fish and the five loaves of bread and he fed all these people mm-hmm. and yep it was like thousands of people and they're really only talking about the men so there were also men you know women and children so just thinking like real you know somebody was definitely like oh <laughs> and he was single so and i am groupies, yeah. I'm like i'm pretty sure that jesus had groupies <laughs> and then it's like what was that like <laughs> Because, you know, I'm thinking in terms of, like, modern day, you have people have bodyguards and they got their handlers to kind of keep them back. But I'm just like, which one of the disciples had that job? Had that job. Keeping (laughs) groupies back. And so just, I don't know if anyone else has had that thought, but it's just like, yeah, what? Did he have groupies? That's too funny. I love it. Jesus groupies. (laughs) And how did that work? Who was in charge of keeping them at bay? Keeping them at bay, keeping them back. Yeah, and then, okay, because you know you think about the woman who touched the hem of his garment she yep. i wouldn't consider her a groovy but she was just one of if they did have a handler because you could and even in you know reading about it after she touched it he's like oh i felt something and his his guys were like yeah don't worry about it There's all these people don't worry about it just one little person like keep, mm-hmm. keep it moving yep but you know with you being a mayor and being a very popular individual <laughs> how do you deal with groupies <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, see, luckily, um, I haven't come across that situation where, where I've had to fend anybody off with a stick or anything like that, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. I see. Politician. Yeah. You just went into politician mode. I got you. <laughs> Real quick. Had to snap into it for a second, you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, like I said, that's, that's my random thought. I um, love it. You know, for those of you listening if you've had a similar thought um, in terms of, I'd love to know, just discuss what you think about the groupie situation and mm-hmm. how it was handled. You know, like I said, but once again, I just want to thank you. I appreciate being, you. Um, like I said, for coming on again and for sharing. And as we continue to navigate and figure out what the rest of 2020 holds, I am still hopeful that come January of next year, I'll still be able to go on this cruise. Mm-hmm. I know. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. We'll that see. So we'll far, see. Carnival has not canceled. Fingers crossed. Um, mm-hmm. um, and I'm referring to it was Blue Reunion. 2K21, I, I guess, yeah, right? 2K20 was this year, 2K21. Because like I said, it is still centennial. And uh, guys need a do over. I need a do over, and you know, started the year off on a great note. But uh, but yeah, like I said, just so many things, and I wish you success and continue or continued success, um, and you know, your personal endeavors as well, endeavors as well as professional navigating the township and as mayor as you are coming to the end of your term that. You definitely have one for the history books. <laughs> definitely. You know, you got a few Never going to forget this one, Latavia. Thank you so much for having me. You have a great program, great platform here, um, and getting various topics out to the public and the community. So I'm honored to be a guest here on your platform. Hopefully I shared somewhat of comprehensible knowledge. I wasn't rambling on too, too much. I know I could get that way, but hopefully everybody can take at least one piece of information that we Um, said here today, even if it's completing the census, if you haven't done it yet, registering to vote if you haven't done it yet, or more importantly, voting in the November election. Vote, vote, vote. If one listener can get that information and pass it out to one person and the next person, I think we'll be in a much better place tomorrow than we are today. I wholeheartedly agree. And if for those who have completed the census or you've already registered to vote, reach out and talk to your family to see if they haven't and yep. help them get registered. 
Um, another group that I want to just point out that I joined recently um, is the Divine Nine HBCU Family Vote Initiative, and it's a group that was started by some HBCU grads as well as members of Divine Nine, various Divine Nine organizations, and it's just working together to educate and inform, get people registered to vote, and, um, you know, kind of get out the information. So I'll post about that as well. Um, Charles, if you would, uh, if you are open to people following you, social media, or whether or not it's the township website, if you could just share that information in terms of how they can find you, sure. um, and maybe if they have, maybe some of your constituents listening, and we're not sure how to get in touch with you, you can, you can give them that information. Sure. Uh, do you want me to give it now? Yes, if you could. Oh, sure. Uh, the website, you can uh, find me at Edgewater Park. That's Edgewater, E-D-G-E, Water Park, one word, hyphen NJ.com um, is our township website. I can be reached by email, Mayor Amuta, M-A-Y-O-R, Amuta is A-M-U-T-A-H, at gmail.com. And my Instagram is Edgewater Park Deputy Mayor, something of the sort. So, okay. um not on there too much uh, these days, but definitely mayormutai at gmail.com if you have any questions, any assistance that I can be, even if it's connecting you with your local official, if you're in the state of New Jersey, if you're in the state of Maryland, you know, um, over where you're at Latavia, I can definitely try to assist that as well, but I would implore you to check out the resources available on your township website, your county website, and your state websites. A lot of the information that you seek can be found there, and they'll be specific to your town and your state. So thank you again for having me. All right. Thank you again. And though, thank you all for listening. As always, even though it doesn't look or feel like it right now, in the end, it is all working together for our good. So take some time, focus on the positive things, enjoy this journey that is life, and join me as I am learning to trust the process. So thank you for listening. And until next time. Have a great time, everybody. Thanks, Latavia. Thanks so much. Be safe and take care.